Hey everybody and welcome. Today we are here in Glendale, Kentucky and we're getting ready to take you guys along with us to Whistle Stop Cafe. Choo choo! little sleepy town here there's an old double cola sign don't see too many of those anymore this is very fascinating here so in between the whistle stop cafe which is right here and this double cola store which now serves as an antique shop right in between it's almost like a an old log cabin and there's no door to it. It's just simply windows on the top, windows on the bottom, but I really like the old style feel of this building. Taking a look here at the menu, you can already see that the Whistle Stop Cafe was voted the best non-franchise restaurant in Kentucky since 2010 and voted best desserts in Kentucky. So we're gonna try the pie for sure at the end. And let's go ahead and take a look inside the menu. Here are the appetizers that they have available. You can see they have some fried green tomatoes, which we're gonna try out. We're gonna do the half order because we need to save room for dessert. They also have soups and salads. And right here is the Kentucky Hot Brown. We're gonna talk about that here in just a second. I'm definitely gonna order the Kentucky Hot Brown and I'll tell you why after I'm done showing you guys the menu. Here's open face roast beef, buffalo chicken, salad grits here are some burger selections that they have right here they have traditional favorites meatloaf pot roast pork chops down here they have catfish fried chicken and chicken tenderloins here is a look at their sides as well as their premium sides here is a look at their pies and cobblers their coconut meringue looked excellent when i looked up some reviews online and read some reviews here are some homemade cakes, and they do serve Pepsi products. Here are the fried green tomatoes, and it looks like a homemade sauce. I don't know what the sauce is made of, but it definitely looks like there's paprika on the top. We'll test it out here and let you know what we think. Jennifer is gonna try one of the fried green tomatoes here. I'll tell you one thing that I really enjoy is the lighting here. When we film in some restaurants, the lighting is just not there, but it is here at the Whistle Stop Cafe. So these are piping hot and crispy on the outside, and it looks like possibly a mixture of flour and cornmeal. Oh, yeah. Ooh, and they smell amazing. I'm gonna try it by itself first, and then I'm gonna try it with the sauce. That's so tasty. You can taste like the little bit of sour from the green tomato, and then the breading is not too much. It's just perfectly crispy and tasty. So there's that sauce. And it smells like horseradish radish right off. So I'm sure I'm gonna love that. That complements the fried green tomatoes very well. It's just enough horseradish, and it's kind of like a sour cream base. It's really, really delicious. All right, so I'm going to try one of the fried green tomatoes. I can already tell how hot it is. Um, I'm going to try it by itself first. I have to preface this by saying that I don't like horseradish sauce. It's just something that I don't personally care for, but I'm going to try it. But if I don't like this, keep in mind, I'm not a horseradish fan. So here we go. It's just got that horseradish sauce to, taste to it, and uh, I'm not a horseradish sauce fan. What are you drawing there, Henry? The patio. The patio here at the Whistle Stop Cafe. Wow, that's pretty good. Gentry, what are you drawing over there? Among Us. Among Us. Jennifer, what did you end up getting? I got their seared pork chop, and they actually seared this in a skillet with all kinds of seasoning, and you can see that good crust on there. And then mashed potatoes, which it looks like 
there's butter on top, yum. And then there's collard greens, and it looks like there's some pork in there. And then this is the drippings from the skillet from the pork chop cooking. And then this is their brown gravy, which it looks like it has pot roast in it. And then there's vinegar for my collards. Wow, that looks incredible. It does smell so good. What'd you get there? I got chicken and honey mustard and then chicken and mashed potatoes. Those mashed potatoes look really good, don't they? All right, Gigi, what'd you end up getting there? I got and macaroni with their famous cornbread. Wow. Looks like pancakes, but it's cornbread, huh? Yeah. It looks really good. All right, Britt, what are you having today? So I have the Kentucky Hot Brown. If you're not familiar with the Kentucky Hot Brown, the Kentucky Hot Brown is a dish that has been popularized here in the Louisville, Kentucky area. It originated at the Brown Hotel in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, but it's the best way to describe it. It is a, an open face roast beef, or a hot shot if you will, combined with like a BLT without the L. There's no lettuce in it. You have the bacon on top, as you can see here. There's cheese, and I haven't even cut into this yet, but you'll see that there is turkey. So that's the, the key difference. Instead of open face roast beef, you have turkey, and then there's bread. And instead of gravy, you have this cheese or Bernays sauce that is typically put over top of the Kentucky Hot Brown. One thing I want to say about this particular restaurant, this particular hot brown, USA Today has ranked the best hot browns in America. And on that top 10 list is right here at the Whistle Stop Cafe, this hot brown. Jennifer, what are you going to try first there? I'm going to try the seared pork chops. That looks so good. That's so delicious. It's very savory. We got the really good seasoning on the outside. It's seasoned perfectly all the way through. And the searing helped make a really good crust, which also made it juicy on the inside. It's perfect. And remind us again, what is this? This is the pan drippings from where they seared the pork chop. So I would assume they probably did it in a cast iron skillet. So you can kind of see those good bits there. Oh my goodness, that just adds to the flavor. You can taste all the seasonings that they used and then you can taste like the, the browning of the pork chop. Oh my gosh, so good. Here's the mashed potatoes. And it looks like they also finished them off with some melted butter. Yum. Those are definitely homemade. These are just like the ones that we cooked at home. So good, just very simple. You just boil your potatoes and you add some milk and butter, salt and pepper, and that's really all they need. Um, I did get the gravy just because I like to try the homemade gravy at places. And it looks like this one's a pot roast gravy, which they do serve pot roast here as well. So I'm gonna try a little bit on there. That's very good as well. It's not too salty or anything, and it's just like a homemade gravy from your, you know, the drippings of your pot roast, so good. So here are the collards. And it looks like there's maybe some pork in there of some kind. Oh yeah. So y'all know that I love the turnip greens over at Cracker Barrel. And these are collards, but they taste very, very similar. So delicious. Brent's gonna dig in here. One thing I forgot to mention, in addition to the turkey, there's also ham. I'm gonna get some of the cheese sauce here, some of the bacon, some of the tomatoes. Here we go, first bite of the Kentucky Hot Brown at the Whistle Stop Cafe. There's so much protein in this, so <laughs> I'm really worried about making it to dessert, but we will make room, trust me. But with the cheese, the ham, the bacon, the turkey, it, it is just the, the perfect combination. And, you know, I, I've had some hot browns in the past where I've not liked the hot browns, but I am a huge fan of this hot brown. I can see why it definitely made the top 10 list. If you come here, haven't tried anything else because it's our first time here, 
but you can't go wrong with the Kentucky Hot Brown here at the Whistle Stop Cafe. So, I'm going to try their famous cornbread. Not pancake, but their famous cornbread. Fried cornbread, right? <laughs> it's very soft. It's very good. I'll definitely get this. And you got to choose that as one of your sides, right? Yes. It came with a lot. It looks like what, four half pieces there? Yum. Have you tried your macaroni yet? Yes, it's very cheesy. It's in Shoya huh? <laughs> Henry, you seem to be enjoying that fried chicken. How is it? Good. All right. Here are the desserts. We ended up getting the Kentucky pie as well as the coconut cream. And just look at that meringue. That is just going right up to the sky right there. That is just amazing what a heaping pile of meringue that is all right gentry and henry are going to go in for the kentucky pie in nashville we actually call this kentucky derby pie which is a combination of jennifer what are the ingredients in kentucky derby pie um it, it is kind of like a pecan pie with semi-sweet chocolate Looks like Henry has gone in for some of the whipped cream there. <laughs> if you've ever had the chocolate pecan pie at Cracker Barrel that they sell seasonally, it's kind of very similar to that. Gentry, what's your opinion on it? You just had a bite. It's very chocolatey. Very chocolatey? And it's almost like it's uh, lukewarm out of the oven. So that's definitely super fresh and not too sweet. I definitely could not eat a whole piece of that right after this meal that we just had, so I'm so glad we're sharing it, but it's very tasty. So I wanna just show you a comparison to the fork here of just how large this heaping pile of meringue is. Look at those caps on the top. All right, here we go. A little bit of the meringue, a little bit of the pie, a little bit of the crust. Here we go. My favorite pie of all time is banana cream pie. It's rare that you can find a restaurant that serves banana cream pie, but one of those most important elements to banana cream pie is the meringue. So when I bite into this, I kind of get a, an initial hint of that banana cream, but it still has that very tropical taste. Not bananas, obviously, but with a coconut, and so I'm really enjoying this. All right, final bill before tip for two meals, two adult meals, that is two kids meals, an appetizer, and two desserts came to a grand total of $74.96 before tip. That was the Whistle Stop Cafe in Glendale, Kentucky. Jennifer, what did you think about the Whistle Stop Cafe? I am so full. It was so delicious. Uh, the appetizer, the fried green tomatoes was great. The horseradish sauce was my favorite part of that. I could have dipped that in so many different, with so many different things. Uh, my pork chop was cooked perfectly, seasoned very well, very savory. Uh, I liked that they had the pan drippings from there. That was like an added bonus. That was really good. I would eat a bite without it, eat a bite with it delicious. Everybody at the table tried it except for, I think Gentry didn't try it. He was too full. Um, but everybody loved that. The mashed potatoes were perfect, not salty, just perfect and creamy. The collard greens, amazing. And the pie was great too. All right. Gentry, what do you think about the Whistle Stop Cafe? I would definitely come here. It's a really good place. All right. And Henry, I know you're enjoying yourself playing with the rocks there by the railroad tracks, but what do you think about the Whistle Stop Cafe? They didn't have fries, so I just got a steak. And were they good? Uh-huh. All right. What about the chicken? Good It was so not salty, but... And would you want to come back again? Uh-huh. All right. And I'm so glad that we made this stop out here. It's not far from I-65, so if you're in the area south of Louisville, this is a place to go to. I've only had about four or five Kentucky Hot Browns in my entire life, but I will say this was my favorite Hot Brown that I have ever had out of the four or five that I've had in my lifetime. It was very good. 
Uh, we all tried, with the exception of Gentry, some of Jennifer's pork chops. And I will say, if I were to come back here again, I'm going for the pork chops. Those were so amazing, so delicious. Uh, her mashed potatoes are really good as well. And guys, if you're here in Glendale, Kentucky, there's a reason why this has been on the Food Network. It's been on Southern Living in Southern Living Magazine. It's been hosted in a number of different um, nationally popularized TV shows as well as magazines, and there's a reason for it. This is some really great food. One more thing I have to mention, our waitress Whitney was incredible. She was so kind and so attentive and just had a great personality, and we really appreciated the service that we received here. The manager, he was awesome as well. And guys, we thank you so much for joining us here in Glendale, Kentucky, and we sure do look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Every Day is Saturday.